Hallo und willkommen zur 63. Folge von Suzerain. Letzte Folge haben wir in der öffentlichen äh, Pressekonferenz Peter entlassen. Und heute geht es darum, einen neuen Vice President zu wählen. It was here, the day I'd been dreading since Peter's resignation. At the entrance to my office, my new secretary, Salvia, took my hat and coat. She was matron matronly woman in her forties. <clears throat> She had a spotless background assisting various Maroon Palace officials. officials. <clears throat> replacing Lawia had been easy, but replacing a vice president would be difficult. Soyish law dictated that if a vice president failed to complete his term, new candidates were to be put forward by the members of the cabinet. After the much deliberation, the list had been narrowed down to three. Lucian Garrett was the, was the front runner, followed by Gloria Torrey and Alvin Cleven. Alvin Cleven. Oh, verdammt. Aber wir haben ihm keinen Post angeboten. Gloria hat gegen uns gestimmt. Also, es ist, es ist, es ist glaube ich, logisch, <lacht> wer hier jetzt am Ende gewinnen wird. It was up to me to decide who would fill Peter's shoes. I wanted to chat with them one on one before making my decision. I had just begun to settle at my desk when I heard a knock on the door. Lucian entered and perched on my chair across from me. Sir? So, Vice President Gillette, what do you think? You know why you are here. I do. In my current cap capacity as Chief Strategist, I have evaluated the experience and capabilities of your potential Vice President. Objectively, I am by far the most qualified candidate. I would advise you not only to think about our long history together, but also the many crises I have helped shepherd you through. I won't say much beyond that. I believe my work speaks for, the, for itself. You're such a valuable strategist. I don't know if I can afford to lose you in that cap capacity. As Vice President, my ability to serve you and this administration will only increase. Lucian got up from his chair. I expect you will make the right decision. He left my office. Just a minute later, there was another knock on the door, and Gloria Torrey came in. Mr. President, I must say I was not surprised at all when my name was put forward. So, Gloria, tell me why I should pick you. To put it simple, What I bring to the table is years of experience. I have been a member of the Assembly for almost 20 years, and I spent seven years as its speaker. This alone speaks for itself. As you know, I am also the leader of the conservative wing of the party. You can see what I'm getting at? You're becoming vice president and I get the votes from the conservatives. Precisely. This would allow us to pass bills far more easily, especially if those bills are aligned to my block's cause. Gloria. <clears throat> Gloria, Gloria, Gloria. Ja, okay. Der nicht dabei. Aber du und die Konservatives habt gegen meine. Gegen meine, 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 meine. Wie heißen die Dinger? <lacht> Reform. Reform gewotet. Warum? Warum sollte ich dann dich wählen? There's no ask, Gloria. Before I try refusing, I insist you at least think about it. Unifying the party instead of fracturing it would certainly be better for the future of the USP. I want you to know that I value order 
over everything else, Mr. President. Being the Speaker of the Assembly requires principles, nerves like steel, and determination to uphold proper conduct. You can expect to see the same of my Vice Presidency. Being a woman could also prove advantages. Not just any woman, not just any woman, I s a strong woman who was able to protect order in a room full of unruly men for seven years. Think about the message it would send. The first woman vice president of Scotland. No, the first woman wife, uh, vice president in the whole continent. What support you would lose among traditionalists you would gain tenfold among Swedish women. There's much to gain from selecting me, Mr. President. I believe you will make the right choice. That will be all for now. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you a nice day, Mr. President. <laughs> this is a bit schwierig. You are made your way out. A minute later, there was another knock on the, at the door. This time, it was Alden Clevin's turn. Greetings, Mr. President. It was... It's a great honor to have been chosen as a candidate. Really terrific. I will be straightforward. Why should I pick you? As you know, I rep represent the reformist wing of the party. What Sotland needs today is not only to catch up to our more modern neighbors, but to surpass them. Surpass them. I believe we can do that. No, I am sure. However, this will only be possible if we set aside our differences and unite as one. That is the outlook I wish to bring to the position of Vice President. So that Swordland can excel and soar to new heights. I, I did not ask about your opinions. What can you provide, with, provide me with? Very well, the fact is, if I'm the vice president, reformist members of our party will be more likely to support you and your causes. This will smooth the passage of bills and help more move our administration and our country and country forward in record time. If you join the administration, that is. I don't think that's likely. As unlikely as it is, we all must try. What this country needs is more dynamic, youthful leadership. Look at you, Pre uh, President Rennie. You became the youngest member of the Assembly and completely rejuvenated Swedish politics. I want to do the same. We need to be able to take risks and make gains, and, and that is it is only possible with forward-looking perspective. There, if uh, I've started my case, I trust your judgment. This will be all for now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Alvin got out and left. I then back in my chair, thinking about my pros and cons of each of my vice president, uh, pre presidential candidates. I could almost hear Peter's voice in my head, laughing at the absurdity of my situation. But of course, he wasn't there. The vice president position remained recent after the events of the scandal, and has to be filled by a cap capable person that the administration and party can trust. Several options have been laid out the cabinet, and we need to make a decision immediately. Oh fuck! Man, Lucian is halt obviously the Wahl, die wir nehmen sollten, weil er halt einfach dieses krasse Standing in der Partei hat und uns halt auch gut geholfen hat. Gloria hat ziemlich viel Erfahrung. Ziemlich ähm, gutes Standing auch in der Partei. Vor allem im konservativen Wing. 
den wir nicht unter unsere Fittiche bringen konnten. Und sie ist eine Frau, was uns auch die Frauenstimmen bringen könnte. Alvin ist sowieso raus. Alvin sagt Balls. Das ist eine schwierige Entscheidung. Ach man, ich will die Entscheidung nicht treffen müssen. Warum? Warum muss ich die alleine treffen? Ich hasse, ich hasse alles. Wenn wir Gloria nehmen, ist er Lucian pisst und arbeitet gegen uns. Das wollen wir halt auch nicht, weil wenn, Lush, wenn wir Lucian gegen uns haben, ist schlecht. Aber wenn wir Lucian haben, dann haben wir keine, haben wir die Frauen nicht auf unserer Seite. Und die Konservatives nicht. Das ist scheiße alles. Es ist alles, alles, alles scheiße. Gloria oder Lucian? Ich will jetzt Abplan rufen, aber der pennt noch. Bin ich mir hundertprozentig sicher, dass er noch pennt. Gloria, Lucian. Gloria? Oh mein Gott. Ich nehme Gloria. Oh Gott! After the 1953 elections, you, she was elected to speak at the... Warum steht das noch nicht drin, dass sie Vice President ist? Ich würde sagen, das war's mit der Folge. Lasst ein Like und ein Abo, wenn es euch gefallen hat. Ich hoffe, beim nächsten Mal wieder vorbei. Morgen 14 Uhr geht's weiter und tschüss.